Hi, welcome to Crushing Carbon. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take these uh, spectrographic uh, electrodes here, which are supposed to be extremely pure. I mean, the whole point of these things is that they're very pure so that uh, you can actually analyze other materials uh, through using an arc. So uh, we're going to take some of these and we are going to put them into this brand new lovely ceramic pestle and mortar here. And this is uh, going to enable us to crush these uh, things up. And uh, we are then going to analyze that uh, with EDX once it's been crushed. So if there's anything coming from here and here uh, in the crush, that'll be included in the analysis. And so we will know what we are putting into the Nova reactor. After crushing, uh, we're going to use this sieve here to do a little bit of grading and maybe put uh, the output into a, a number of these sample jars. Uh, some of the sample, I am going to use this uh, neodymium magnet that you've seen before. And based on uh, someone who did these carbon arc dis uh, research in 2001, they used a white balloon and they covered the neodymium magnet uh, after they did their experiment, and they were able to pick up um, uh, some parts. Uh, so if I go and stretch this over here, we end up with something that's nice, clean, white surface. So we'll be able to test whether the uh, uh, the electrodes are magnetic beforehand, and we'll do that on this video. Uh, when I tested the electrodes the other day, in an, uh, which is another video on our YouTube channel, uh, you could see that uh, it was uh, diamagnetic, i.e. the magnet pushed the carbon away uh, from this uh, neodymium magnet. So uh, if we're uh, attracting it after we've done the exposure in the uh, Nova reactor, then we have a, at least a change in its approach to magnetism. Okay, so here goes. I'm going to drop a few of these in here. One, two, three, four, four. These are all from the same batch. And uh, we'll start having a go at crushing these up. Let's see if this works. Ah. Well, they're pretty hard, I have to say. Sample jars is going to fall off the table. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make that uh, electrode. <laughs> make it all nice and consistent and in one lump and here we are, we're smashing it up. Do let me know when this gets boring. <laughs> okay. 
Well, it's definitely not a new pestle and mortar anymore. Thank you for donations that help support this. Uh, Okay, I think we're nearly there. We can certainly try sieving some of this as where it was horribly wrong. So you can see some fine powder on the bottom of that. Now I can probably hear Dr. Eagley saying that this maybe is too fine because if the particles are too fine, then uh, they can just uh, oxidize. So I've kept some uh, from the same batch uh, to the side so that maybe we can crush these up uh, before we do the next test. But hopefully we can use this stuff, because uh, this will be the stuff that I'm testing tomorrow. So I have this hydrocarbon-based spoon here, and I'm going to load some into this sieve. And uh, we're going to do two grades, one that passes through the sieve and one that doesn't, in theory. And uh, let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. Du, 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 du. And there's probably loads of people out there says there's a much better way of doing this. You should be doing it like this. Maybe. It all seems to be going through there quite nicely. Oops. No one said this was going to be a clean thing to do. Definitely those pieces look a bit bigger. I don't know if you can see that. These pieces are a little bit more chunky and we have some fine powder in here. So I'm going to move that and then this one is going to take the chunkier bits. We have two grades from the same source, and then Dr. Eagley can tell us which one he prefers to use. Let's see if we can get a little bit more out of that. Mm. You know, you can use YouTube's f double time feature to watch these videos. Uh, save you a bit of life. I don't want people wasting their life. I want them to be doing experiments. Okay. I'm sure people are saying I should just be tipping it out of there, but anyway, I think they're mostly there. So, that's our high grade, this is our fine powder, so, getting real. Get that underneath, right. Would it be nice to find a sieve that exactly fitted into this, but it's pretty close. Can't have everything perfect. Nearly there. It's mostly there. Okay, so that's the fine one. Lovely and fine. 
See if that can hold that there. Take a shot here. See that's a nice fine powder there. Now, Dr. Eagley has a method for grading this, and it's to put it into a laminar flow wind tunnel. You know, maybe with a like a pipe. Uh, and then you have the laminar flow coming in this end, you drop the powder in, and then the pipe has, you know, maybe a pers perspex pipe with a, you know, a computer fan and a load of straws making a nice laminar flow. And then down the length of the pipe you have, uh, you know, cuts cut into it with a bandsaw or something. And so you can actually grade the size of the particles that way, which is a really novel and inexpensive way to grade particles. Anyway, this is our coarse grain particles here. Uh, and <clears throat> I'm going to clean this up a little and then we're going to see what happens with the neodymium magnet, see if it picks up anything. Okay. Okay, first I'm going to do the test where I put the uh, carbon powder that we've just crushed. Uh, on top of this neodymium magnet with the paper. Let's see what happens. There's definitely some movement there. Okay. And the question is, is this diamagnetic? Okay, so we have our balloon stretched over the magnet. I'm going to see if we get any joy here. Uh, doesn't look like it's picking anything up. Uh, of course it is white and that's graphite and if I touch it it's going to... No, that doesn't look like it's picking anything up. Just to confirm, I have a piece of iron here, and uh, I'm going to bring it. Oh, okay, all right. Well, <laughs> if it if it is magnetic, then it, it easily picks it up. <laughs> don't, don't even have to get remotely close. Okay, so that does that, and this. Doesn't do anything. So we are testing the spectrographic uh, carbon that I mashed up and I you can see yes it's saying 100%